There we are. All right. Well, we're all here. Let's get going, girls. Um, if Deborah can't connect to the audio, she can at least receive the recording afterwards. So that's still going to work. All right, girls. Hello. Welcome. My name is Elizabeth, and I'm the spiritual director and mindset medicine practitioner at Longevity Wellness. There, uh, that, those are long, long words, lots of words. It, it essentially means that my expertise is in consciousness. It's in your spiritual space. And my job is to help unwrap the relationship between what's happening in the realm of consciousness, what's happening in the energy field, and what's manifesting in, 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 in the world of form, which is your body, your relationships, your business, your workplace, your hobbies, and, and, and unraveling the relationships, the links between what's going on in mindset and what's happening in real actualized life, that process of an unraveling is in the, the best case scenario resolving of problems and the worst case scenario revealing of solutions. So it's a win-win being involved in, in this kind of a work. Hi, Deborah, we've got you. We do. Welcome. I was off in the other room and I didn't get your message. <laughs> You're here now and that's all that matters. It's good to see you, darling. Well, we're here, we're doing this work today. We're calling this workshop Clearing Mindset Glitches. Clearing the glitches that are stuck in your psychonumosomatic world. The glitches that, that prevent us from really reaching for the potential that is ours by birthright. So we're going to talk about first a little bit about what glitches are, what mindset glitches are, where they come from, and what happens, what, what, what that looks like as far as energetic manifestation. And then I'm going to take you through a really simple alchemy technique. Now, alchemy is really just um, combining one energy with another energy to form a higher vibration. That's what alchemy is, turning lead into gold, essentially. Now, in ancient teachings, alchemy required two ingredients. It required the philosopher's stone, which is structure, which is form, and the elixir of life, which is essence, which is that which is endless and timeless and true. So what I'm going to show you towards the end of this class is a technique that we can use to, to bind together these the different layers of your being, your mind, your energy field, and the manifestation, a way to bind those things together so we've got one package we're dealing with instead of trying to heal every little layer of the onion. It's an endless onion, girls. We can't keep peeling the layers off because we continue to manifest more layers. Instead, we want to go straight into the center of the onion. Um, another way to think of it, another metaphor to use to think of it is to say this is a little bit like a, a, a way of being, a, a, a vibrational presence in the world is like a really complicated network of dominoes. And instead of trying to heal one domino after another, we want to sort of go all the way back to the original domino. And we want to, we want to topple that one and then just let process do the rest. So process is very, very important, girls. All right, this is, uh, today is part teaching and part workshop, okay? So I want you to get comfortable. I want you to open your mind. Think of receiving. Think of receiving wisdom. Think of receiving something new. You might have heard every single word before. It's not about learning information. It's about receiving a transmission of wisdom. So open your mind to receive. And, and remember, it's, it's okay for you to take notes. It's okay for you to jot things down, but you aren't here to study. You aren't here to remember lots of stuff. You're not, not here to gather more dots in the puzzle. Rather, you're here to learn how to, 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 to draw a line between those bots and, uh, dots and reveal an image. That's what this is really all about. This is much more about transmission than about anything else. So, um, girls, my, my personal expertise, my, my modality is called vibrational ontology. It's a way of knowing a new reality into being. 
Essentially, it's shifting the mindset. That's a more mainstream way of saying it, shifting your mindset. We all know that we create by our mindset, don't we? Everyone knows that. Is anyone, anyone a little bit unsure about what that means? We pretty much all get that. We all agree that we create by the nature of our way of mind. And so if we can know a new reality and to be, if we can shift the way that we interpret ourselves, the way that we relate to life, if we can make some fundamental changes there, then the energetic result is that everything changes for us in life. So the words vibrational ontology, I'm going to unwrap those a little bit because it does help to understand. Ontology is the branch of philosophy that deals with becoming. It's also called process thought because becoming is a process. We're all on the journey, aren't we? Every one of us, we're all on this journey of growing up, on this journey of coming home to who we really are, to, to remembering truth, not recalling it. Oh, I remember. It's not about that. It's about remembering ourselves into truth. And that is a process, right? And there was vibrational ontology honors the fact that that process of becoming is not purely cognitive. It's not all in the brain, is it? It's a whole body experience. It's vibrational. So what we're going to do today, I want to challenge you to stay open in the mind, but also stay open in your energy field. Stay open in your heart. So if you feel yourself closing off a little bit, if you feel yourself like shutting the door or building a wall, or if you feel like you might be feeling a little bit vulnerable or a little bit afraid to maybe reveal yourself in any way or anything like that, just see if you can sink into allowing. And I'm going to do my absolute best, girls, to hold a space of safety, of, of genuine love so that you can know that it really is safe to be open energetically, to receive the frequencies of love that I'm transmitting to you, embedded in every word that I give you. All right, loves. I'm going to help to, to initiate a process today. I'm gonna help you to begin a conversation with your consciousness and and my my belief in fact my knowing is that you'll leave this workshop today feeling renewed feeling hopeful for continued renewal right continued renewal a process so that your mindset begins the journey of unraveling some of these old mindset glitches and opening up for the miracle of grace to refresh and reawaken. I use the word grace very intentionally. It is true that we have work to do, that we need to do our bits. We need to weed the garden, don't we? We need to water the plants, but it isn't us that does the growth. That's an inner providence. That's an existing inner agency, a divine agency. That It's a mystery, really. But we're going to call it grace. We're going to call it um, a frequency of love that exists universally in the quantum field, in the very fabric that you're made of. This frequency exists for you. And you're allowed to open up, to begin to receive it, to begin to drink from that wellspring of goodness that, that really is in charge of your unfolding, of your becoming. So while I will give you techniques for you to work on so that you're doing your end of the bargain, it's important for you to remember, my darlings, that it's not all on your shoulders. It is not all on your shoulders to change into a butterfly. There's a metamorphosis going on that you get to participate in. Okay, so those are the ground rules here. Let's begin with what's mindset. 
All right. We've got our, we, we have our ideas about what mindset is, having a good attitude, having a good thinking. If you've got anything you want to share, you know, pop it in the comments or just stick your hand up or just shout it out. If, if you have any thoughts along the way, feel free to share them. It's a safe space to do that. But also you don't need to share. You don't need to be thinking of what should I say or what does she want me to say? That's not necessary either. So think about what mindset is to you. What have you believed mindset to be over the course of your, of your life? Does anyone have any thoughts to share on that? It is about more than positive thinking, isn't it? It's not just about saying, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a jolly good day today. I've decided I've got a great mindset about today. It's not just about positive thinking. And it's not just about your attitude either. Your, your mindset is fundamentally the result of your psychonumosomatic data. That's a long way of saying your mental, vibrational, and bodily data. These are the coordinates of all of your subconscious beliefs and their impact on your mental world, your emotional feeling world, and then your behavioral world. Yes, the choices that you make or the choices that you choose not to make, avoiding the decisions perhaps, yeah, not going to the gym when you know you need to exercise or picking up the food you really know you oughtn't or being triggered in a conversation and lashing out to someone that you love. Choosing not to make those phone calls when you know you need to up your sales. We're all guilty of these things. We're all, we're all guilty, it's a big word, isn't it? But we, we all succumb to the influences of the glitches that live in our mindsets. And the result is that our vibrational reality forms around us as a result of the psychonumosomatic data in our consciousness. That's how our mind is set. Think of it like a framework. I'm going to draw you a picture in a minute that's going to help to really really unravel what that means and, and how real the process of creative becoming is when we relate it to our mind set. Do you have any questions about that, girls, before I go on? No. Mindset. Good. No. Wonderful. So we're not just talking about positive thinking. Positive thinking is useful, but your reality isn't formed based on your thoughts, contrary to what a lot of law of attraction teachers might be telling you, or what a lot of self-help gurus might be telling you, your thoughts are not things. Your thoughts are not shaping your reality. Creative quantum reality is much, much more delicate than that. And thank goodness, I am so glad my thoughts are not creating my reality. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Oh my goodness, I don't have time to monitor every single one of my involuntary thoughts. Thank goodness for grace. Yes. If you've heard the term, here but for the grace of God go I, that's a very real appreciation and acknowledgement of the fact that there is a fundamental agency of providence that governs our becoming, that it isn't purely down to our mastery of every thought and every feeling and every emotion. That said, it is necessary for us to get really raw and really true about the framework through which we know ourselves. And let's be honest. We all have very good reasons for believing the things we do about ourselves. And over the course of our lives, we've collected a lot of evidence to prove that we're right in believing this way. Yes? I am so unworthy. I don't deserve a good relationship. I suck at life. 
everything I do work, it works for others, but it doesn't work for me. My culture doesn't allow me to behave the way that I want to behave. I, I can't dance down the aisles of the supermarket when I go grocery shopping. That would be embarrassing. It's not possible to find good people out there. Well, I'm the only one who understands the true nature of spirituality. They don't see me. They don't understand me. Or what about something relating to your business, relating to your sales? What about something like, I'll never be able to triple my income unless I also triple my work hours? Or what about, I can't make those sales. I'm not a salesperson. What about, I'm not a businesswoman? What about, business isn't spiritual? What about, it runs in my family? It runs in my family is actually a mindset glitch that I see a lot in my work. So many of my clients will present, they will demonstrate results in their life, in their body, in their energy fields, because it just runs in my family, they say. Or very, very subtle mindset uh, glitches, like I'm supposed to do it like this. We're supposed to do it like that. Yeah? That's what's expected of me. That's how I need to show up. I have clients who have made ginormous life decisions based on this one. I need to walk away from it all. I just need to get away. I need to escape. Huge decisions they've made based on that one. Now, you know the drill, girls, right? All of these things add up. All of these subtle little narratives add up to become the framework of your consciousness, the way that your mind is set. And just like a solid cup, right? The cup is solid. And when you fill the cup, liquid will take on the same shape as that solid cup. Do you understand that? Sure. So your mindset, your coordinates of consciousness are like the structure. They're like the solidity of the cup. And the essence of creative life force that flows through you will take on that same shape. Remember I said for alchemy, you need both the philosopher's stone, you need the structure, and you need the elixir of life, which is the essence. You need both for true renewal. Okay, now let me ask you again, feel free to either raise your hand or pop your answer in the comment box, but, or just know the answer in your heart. Why did you come here today? What are the strands of narrative in your mind that prevent you from really pivoting your experience, that really prevent you from becoming the thing that you know you're becoming? prevent you from grabbing that potential. Does anybody want to share? A mindset glitch that you're aware of, something right now that's preventing you from grabbing that potential, and leaping into it. What's the voice in your head saying to sabotage your life? Oh, I, I'm happy to share. Lovely, thank it's you. Funny. Okay, so I'm a board certified patient advocate and I'm switching over from doing advocacy to teaching it. And one of the things that keeps showing up is um, people still wanting coaching and me doing one-on-one -on -one work. And I'm really, really struggling to let that go because I always feel like it's somebody important in my life and there's nobody else to help. And lately it's been a lot of uh, COVID vaccination complications. And the last one was a dear friend of 25 years and she almost died. And I lost a good three to four weeks worth of work time to give to her. So, <laughs> got it. Yeah, I'm stuck. So I'm here to get unstuck. Got it. I got it. Brilliant. So let me ask you then: um, the the struggle here is in letting go of your own personal identity as a coach, as a one to one coach. Uh, yeah. Or is it of, of still being in the trenches versus? just doing online only. Got it. Okay. Like I have to take her to the doctors. I have to go to the hospital with her. I have to set up the testing and the endoscopy and have to be there for the surgery. 
And let me ask you, would it be a different story if it wasn't a dear friend? Oh, well, um, yes, 100%. Okay. So there's an attachment here both to the identity as the one-to-one -one coach who works in the trenches and gets hands-on, and there's also attachment to how you believe you need to show up for the people of value in your life. Yes? Yeah. Yes. It would really be helpful if people I knew stopped getting sick. That would be useful, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Brilliant. Now, there may also be an attachment here to the idea of what a good friend is or in the idea of how to serve, right? How I serve. In fact, perhaps um, this is how I serve encompasses both of those things. Yes. Both yeah, the identity sure. of being a one-to-one -one coach and the way we show up as a good friend. Sure. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing that, Bonnie. I want you to hold on to that, okay? Hold on to that because we're going we're gonna to address the physicality of shifting that in a little bit. Okay, sure. Does anybody else have something to put on the table? If there's something that you have but you don't want to share, that's fine as well. You can just hold it in your knowing. That's absolutely fine. Uh, hold it in your knowing. Um, just like we discovered with, with Bonnie's example, there could be multiple strands that you're identifying that all can be wrapped up as one, right? What we're wanting to do when we work together privately, when you come in and see me at the clinic or we, we meet together over Zoom, what we would do is we would map out what those strands are and we would track them all the way back to the fundamental core trauma, the fundamental core error, the real glitch in the mindset that's causing the outpouring of the, the manifestation that you're not wanting, yes, which in Bonnie's case is being stuck in the trenches, being stuck in a way of service that is depleting and requiring more of her time and also placing a cap on how much she can earn or how, how many people she can serve, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you now a model that really helps to unwrap some of this uh, in your mind. Joanna, I know you've seen it before, but let me show it to you again. This is such a lovely way of thinking, girls. This is a, it's a linear model. Now we understand that consciousness is not linear. Consciousness is quantum, but it's very useful to use a two-dimensional model just to help, us, uh, to help us arrange the way that we're thinking about consciousness, about the conscious relationship between consciousness and energy. So uh, girls, we're also going to acknowledge that everybody has a different spiritual language. Everyone has a different way of interpreting and relating to life, and it's not possible to come to perfect consensus. So you're going to be graceful about the words, about the language that I use to demonstrate these things, and you're going to listen for the meaning instead. And if there are some words that you would normally find triggering, you're going to use your own creative imag imagination to transpose those words into your own vocabulary, into your own vernacular for understanding life. Yes? Okay. Good. All right. Now, we agree... And, and if you don't agree with us, feel free to put your hand up and we can, we can see if we can unwrap it. But, but fundamentally, I think that you and I agree that on a microcosmic level, we are all connected. Yes? Absolutely. Yeah. Good. That we are part of the same fabric of creation. We're, we're connected in energy and in essence. So I'm going to represent that, that field of everything. I'm going to represent that with a big oval here. You feel free to draw along if you have a piece of paper. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give this totality the name God. If you want, you can use universal consciousness, or you can use infinite spirit, or you can use beloved father, whatever you like. But I'm going to say that this, that this, uh, uh, there is one source and substance that we are all a part of. Yeah, on a quantum level, good. And we're gonna say that, uh, that it is knowing, right? We know that consciousness is a thing. We know that we know, that there is stuff we know, right? And we're gonna say that it's isness, right, knowing. 
and is. And we're also going to say that, uh, that we do know that the, the primal frequency of it is what we would call love. So primarily, we all belong to a great big or tiny little cloud of belonging, of, of loving, benevolent belonging. And we know that if, if this totality is knowing, then a very specific part of this totality that knows itself is you, right? This is you. So that means that a strand of this total isness is drawn out like this, laser focused into you. Look, there's Lauren. It's Joanna, right there. That's Deborah, that one. There's Bonnie. And Alison, right there. And me as well. And we've all, we're all made of a strand of this totality. Okay? So some people would say, I am an individual expression of God. Or some people would say that I and my Father are one. What matters is that we understand that, that we are drawn from this same sacred field. Now, the human consciousness is a little bit like a prism, right? In that if you have sunlight on one side of the prism, right? If you've got totality here and you shine it through a prism, then what happens is that it refracts. So sunlight on one side of the prism refracts and becomes value on another. Now this essence here, that this essence that's drawn out of the fundamental total field, in, in Chinese medicine, which is, how, which is how you know the clinic, right? The clinic is a Chinese medicine clinic, longevity wellness. This essence is called qi. And in the East, it's called prana, right? The breath. And in Western terms, it's often referred to as the Holy Spirit. And it's, this is the same word as qi and reiki. For those of you who are reiki practitioners, Ray means universal and ki means, means life force. So, so all of this essence here, right, is life force. That's what creates, right? That's the infinite creative juice. And you can imagine when this infinite creative juice shines on your consciousness, then that refraction effect occurs and it creates according to your mindset yes so that means that uh, think of this a little bit like a stained glass window in a cathedral okay so let's say this is the sunlight and here's a stained glass window in the cathedral then when the sunlight shines through the glass in the cathedral it will take on the images and the colors that are written in the glass so let's say for example here in this glass pane over here, we've got something that says, I haven't suffered enough, right? I have several clients who have in their stained glass window the idea that they haven't yet suffered enough to deserve their overcoming. Does that resonate with you in any way? I have met so many people who believe that Suffering is noble, that if it isn't hard work, then it isn't work, that um, we can only learn through pain, these sorts of things. Or perhaps you have a different one. Perhaps you've got something along these lines that looks like, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve the change that I'm asking for. Or perhaps you've got something along the lines of service, like true service requires blood, sweat, and tears. Or whatever it might be for you, okay? So transpose these things and think about what that narrative is in your mindset that sounds like, sounds like a creative framework through which your life force is moving, okay? Got it. Who has a noisy cat? I do. If you can hear a cat crying in the background, that's mine. 
So imagine these things are, are like stories in the stained glass window. Perhaps it's my husband doesn't understand me. Perhaps it's nobody understands me. Perhaps it's I'm never going to be able to transcend this problem. Perhaps it's healing doesn't run in my family, whatever it might be. In your life, there are narratives that describe limitation, that set rules and limits to what you're able to accomplish. Imagine that these are stories that are embedded in a stained glass window and then see that here's this creative life force that shines through this window and what does it do? It projects. It projects the light out into life. And in our stained glass window metaphor, then this is like the cathedral floor here and the projection is what you get to experience. This is what you get to prehend. So that means that your mindset glitches that are, that are inside the coordinates of your framework of understanding, inside your psychonumosomatic framework for knowing yourself, is reflected in life. This is why we find ourselves meeting up against the same patterns in life again and again. And what we can find ourselves doing is scrubbing the cathedral floor. We can find ourselves spending years and years trying to rearrange the circumstances to make a new life form when actually the real issue is in the mindset. That if we can change, if we can clear these mindset glitches, the natural consequence of creative life force moving through your framework will also alter and a new result will appear. Like that. Now what happens in life is that a trigger comes along. Here's a trigger. Here's a guy who, for example, says, would you like to take this opportunity and work for me earning three times as much as you're earning now and working half the amount of time. And although you would rather like that, if you have fundamentally have one of these rules in your mindset that says that service requires blood, sweat and tears, or that if you, you haven't suffered enough or you don't deserve the opportunity, then what's going to be triggered is an alarm bell. And that means that your emotions, your emotion is a biological response to something in the outer world. It's a communication method, in other words. So what happens then is you are triggered into an emotional response and that changes your chemistry. Your hormones change as a result of an alarm system that goes off in the amygdala. So let's say the emotion is suspicion. Let's say the emotion is perhaps guilt. Oh, I couldn't do that. That wouldn't be right. Whatever it might be, transpose these things into your life. Think about the first, the first emotion rising when you're triggered by something in the world. Perhaps it's anger. Perhaps it's shame. What happens then is when your vibrational container changes, the thoughts that you can access also change. Thinking isn't linear. We don't have archives of thoughts that we can just browse and choose from at will. Thinking is actually quantum. And the thoughts that we're able to access and participate in depend a lot on the chemistry of the body, on the vibration that we're currently sitting in. So if you're triggered into suspicion or guilt, for example, then the thoughts you might be able to access might sound a lot like, oh, that's not possible, or it's too good to be true, or it's not, oh, you can't heal that quickly, or you can't succeed in that manner or whatever it might be. So these are your thoughts, okay? This is, this is the emotional world, emotion, and this is the thought world. And so if your thoughts change, your feelings change. Feeling is different from emotion, isn't it, girls? Emotion is a biological response to something in the world, and feeling is a spiritual response to something going on inside. And when your feelings change, your behavior changes. So that means that your manifest life, the manifest world that you're, that you're participating in, 
is the result of this feedback system. So what does it mean to say that something is forming here in, in the manifest world? Well, perhaps your decision is to turn down the opportunity that might liberate you in some way. Or perhaps you decide not to make those sales calls. Or perhaps you decide that, uh, that, that now isn't the right time for you to challenge yourself with a new coaching program, for example. Other things in manifest form might be the diseases that you hold on to or the way that negative energy manifests in your body. All of these things are results of this feedback loop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So for someone like Bonnie, for example, if we were going to do some work privately, it would be really wonderful to unwrap what the, what the um, original trauma or error codes are that have compounded in your life, that have, that have manifested to continue to prove to you that service looks like a particular thing, that being a good friend means being a particular way, for example. So we would look all the way back to the original one of these um, error codes and we would look for the anchor points in life. And what we would do is wrap all of those up to shift the entire package. Got it? So that's a useful framework um, to, to just help us unwrap the relationship between manifest form, energetics, and consciousness. Okay. Elizabeth? Yes. May I ask you a question? Yes, please. Okay. And, and how do, what do you do to let go of that whole package? Brilliant question. That's an excellent question. Um, it process is, uh, is, the, is the short answer. Alchemy is another answer. Alchemy is, is more accurate to talk about as far as the mechanism is concerned. And that's, that is formed of many different ingredients. Awareness being one, energy work being another, and allowing a release is the third. So I'm going to take you through um, something called the logic tool in a little bit. And that's a way of wrapping these things together. And then to release these glitches, to release them fully, requires an alchemical process, which is best done under guidance. But I am going to show you a quick technique to help. So girls, where do these voices come from? Where do these glitches come from? Does anyone have any idea? a mystery really isn't it? it comes from your history it comes from your surroundings your cultural surroundings your family surroundings what you pick up maybe energetically from anywhere in your surroundings or, or your, the years growing up or pick up anywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a mystery really where it all comes from to be honest with you intergenerational cellular data right? Yeah. It come, it's passed down generationally. Yeah. How many of us women are carrying the so-called witch wound? Yes. That's, an, that's, a, that's a tricky one, this idea that it's shameful, for example, to, to be different or to be, to be unique or to have, have particular gifts or, or supernatural powers. You know, this, this idea that we need to shrink away, we need to act in a particular way. Um, uh, and, and like Joanna said, culturally as well, these collective ideas about what's real and what's true in life. Economic systems. You are worth this much, which means if you want to have this amount of money, you have to work these amounts of hours in this amount in this kind of a way. And you need to have this amount of money in order to have this kind of a lifestyle. So those sorts of systems. Philosophical systems. These are the languages and the words that we are allowed to use to describe these things. And these words are shameful and wrong and evil and sinful, for example. And then some might say, what about past lives? What about the things not, not passed down to me from, my, from, from previous generations genetically, but what about that's what's been passed down to me on a soul lineage? Maybe, I've, maybe I have subtle memories of, of traumatic events from, from other existences. Uh, uh, the word that we use to define that, that mysterious remembering is, 
is the Akash, the Akashic records that, that hold archives of things that we remember somewhere in the subtle body that influence the way that we see the world. Or trauma events in life, right? They can be big traumas. I was homeless once. I've lost dear friends. My best friend died when I was five and another best friend died when I was 20 and left an imprint about friendship, about betrayal. And other small traumas that we didn't realize were traumatic, like the thing that Stacy said to me in third grade about having, having a, a, my butt was too big. And somehow without knowing that, it became written in the cellular consciousness as traumatic. Now, we know that trauma isn't held in the brain, right? Memory doesn't live in the brain. It doesn't live there. It's, it's rather more accurate, but still not completely, but it's more accurate to say that it's, it's written into the genetic coding. It's written into the, your cellular nucleus, into the DNA. And we know that an, an event is recorded as traumatic depending on how much adrenaline is present in your body. So sometimes at, traumas can be completely accidental. You could have had a, a body full of adrenaline for a different reason when something bad happened when you got a, a phone call with a difficult piece of news, for example, and just because of the way your body chemistry was aligned at the time, this particular event was recorded as a trauma. That's why two people can go through the same experience and one person records it as traumatic and another records it as transformational, right? And then of course, simple errors compounded over the years. The idea that, that um, I like to use this one. I used this one at, at the, the last event, that the idea that, uh, that women need to shave their armpits, right? You, you have to shave your armpits if you're a woman. It's a culturally agreed upon error. It's got actually nothing to do with how you must be, how you must present as, as a human being with this particular chromosomal makeup. But because we, we buy into such a collective statement, that means that every time we see a violation of it over the years, it compounds this idea that if I don't uh, conform, then I am different or then I am at danger of being, what, isolated, rejected, ridiculed, whatever it might be. So when we do work together um, privately, what we, will, we, we might unwrap some of the cause some of the original sources of these traumas simply because it helps us to disarm them and it also helps us to to track them all the way back to the original domino in a really long complicated system of interrelated paradigms but we're not really interested in doing too much shadow work we don't really care where it came from as joanna said it's a bit of a mystery really it's just a bit complicated but knowing that it's there that's enough for us to deal with it and move on. Yes? Good. All right, now who's familiar with the chakra system? We're not gonna go through it. Does anyone know the chakra system? Good, a few. Yeah. Wonderful. Now the, the chakra system is a useful framework for us to understand um, how the energetics, how, how these, how this part of our system uh, arranges itself in our vibrational being and in our body. And what we can do is that we can see that core traumas manifest in a logical, sequential way in the energy field and in the body. For example, I have, I have one client whose biggest mindset glitch is the belief that she's not safe, that she's not safe to exist and that she's not safe to be who she is. That if she really lets herself go and expresses herself naturally, then she'll be rejected or abandoned, right? So that means that her root chakra, her root energy center is in imbalance. So she sees danger wherever she goes. <clears throat> and in her body, it means her elimination system is clocked up. That she has problems in the root of the body. So if you look at what's happening in your body, this is a clue about what's happening in your energy field 
and that's a clue about what's happening in the subconscious. Okay, good. It's not completely black and white. It's not black and white like that because we have all got unique ways of being. We've all got unique operating systems. Some of us are very cerebral. Some of us use mental constructs as defense, me defense mechanisms, which means that, that we display solar plexus dissonance instead of sacral dissonance, for example. So when, when you and I work together privately, we, we map out the personality coordinates as well as the relationship between subconscious manifestate of subconscious landscape, the energy field, and then how this leads to manifestation in form. Your body, your finances, your choices in communication, your decisions about going forward or not. So girls, it is energetically binding these four layers together, subconscious, mental, emotional feeling, vibrational, and manifest form, right? Binding these four layers together, that's what's important. Because in truth, we don't need to deal with every single negative thought. We don't need to deal with every imbalanced emotion. But if we can d dissolve the links between the circumstances in the world of form, right? If we can dissolve the link between this circumstance and this emotional feedback and the mental world and the way that this feeds back into our choices. If we can dissolve these links, right? These bits here, then the triggers lose the power to lock us in that feedback system that impedes our progress. And that's key to releasing the mindset glitches because that means you're no longer manifesting on them. You're no longer compounding them. And the natural process of healing, the, the life force that is already flowing through you, already flowing to you, that's what does the release. That's what does the purifying. So if you can release your attachment to this feedback system, then healing is natural. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the, the tool I'm going to show you today is called the logic tool. I want you to follow along. I'm going to take you through a client case study of mine. And on your end, you're going to transpose all of the words that I use into your own life and replace those words with ones that are relevant to you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this, this came from my... my, my my dear client called Muhammad, I worked with him in the United Kingdom last year. And he, he came to me specific, with, with a very strange complaint. The complaint was that his life was just meaningless. It was flat. It was beige. He had everything he could ask for. Um, he, he, he could pinpoint things that he wanted to change. He would love to have scaled his business, but he didn't have enough oomph. He would have loved to have someone to share his life with, but he, couldn't, he didn't have the passion to go after someone. And he just couldn't pinpoint why it was that, that, there was, that he lacked this sparkle in his life. And doing the work together, we quickly found out that his parents had worked, they, had, they were uh, Lebanese immigrants into the United Kingdom. And they had worked really, really hard. They'd come with nothing. They worked really, really, really hard to provide for him and for his brothers. And they'd done a really good job. They'd actually built a life of significant um, uh, prosperity and abundance. And uh, Muhammad grew up having everything that he could ever need. But he'd also grown up with the story that we suffered so that you don't have to. We, we worked so hard so you don't have to. And so being a millennial in, 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 a, in a collective culture where the idea is that you shouldn't have to suffer, that was part of his experience. But the voice was also ringing in his narrative that if you don't work really hard the way that we do, then where's your nobility? Where's your worth? How are you going to measure at the end of the day what you accomplished? Where's your legacy? And so he was in what's called a double bind. It was damned if you do and damned if you don't sort of a thing. 
And that's the case that I'm going to take you through. Now, you're going to transpose this onto the area of your life right now that you're wanting to transcend. In Bonnie's case, to, to come up with or to allow space for a new way of knowing service, a new way of being fulfilled and fulfilling in the way that you show up in life, right? That's, that's unattached from the story, the legacy, the, even the characteristics or the identity displayed. Or if you're here because you have mindset glitches around exercise or wellness choices, or you find yourself sabotaging your healing process, I want you to, to transpose it into that, okay? So, so mind open, transpose into your own life, know who you are, and know how this relates, okay? Now, I'm going to see if I can uh, get my tech going here. Clickety click. There we go. Now, let me know if you can see my screen. Can you girls? Yep, perfectly. Good. All right. Uh, is, are your faces in the way, or am I the only one who can see the faces? I have two screens, so I can see both, so I'm okay. Okay, all right. This is the logic tool, okay? Now, this is adapted from a tool used in cognitive behavioral psychology. In cognitive behavioral psychology, this tool is limited to thoughts, right? To try and rethink your thoughts, try and carve new neuro pathways. But the problem is that we're limited then by brain law. The truth is that your neuro pathways, they're ingrained by the age of 12-ish. So if you were going to try and change your thinking by the way of positive affirmation alone, you would have to use affirmations tens of thousands of times a day to see any real shift in the, in the actual brain mechanism. So this has been adapted to actually bind together the worlds of manifest, or beginning with subconscious paradigm, finding that core trauma, right? So I'm going to make the assumption that you have at least an idea in your mind of what that core trauma code is, what that core error is. Maybe it's, I don't deserve it. Maybe it's, it works for everyone else, but not for me. Maybe it, like my other client, maybe it's, I'm not safe to be who I am. Whatever it might be for you, I'm going to assume that you have some awareness of it. And if not, please call me and we're going to find that out together. We're going to bind together this world with the, with the vibrational world, with the mental world, the narrative world, and with the world of form. And binding that together is what creates these, this like nice package, which we then can shift and Alison, you asked how we do that shifting, and we'll get to that too. All right, so what you're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to take the old paradigm, which is the, the, the way that you are currently living, the, the reality that you currently live in that you're wanting to shift. We're going to take it through a logic pivot, which is just a way of like turning it into like a mirror image, right? And we're going to use logic for that. And we're going to end up with a new paradigm. A new paradigm means a new piece of glass in the stained glass window. It means a new vibrational reality that that creative life force can shine through and project. Yeah. That's what we're aiming to do. Now, this is how the tool works. We're going to have eight columns side by side. I need to speed it up a little bit here gracefully speed it up you understand we're not rushing anything at all the first column we're going to call the core paradigm okay now in muhammad's case it was i haven't suffered enough i haven't suffered enough to be counted worthy i haven't suffered enough for this work to be hard i need i need to do more right do you understand do you, do you know the hustle energy do any of you know the hustle energy where if i haven't hustled today then i must not have been very productive right all came, for him, it all came back to this idea that I haven't suffered enough. My parents suffered so I wouldn't have to. In the next column, you're going to hash out the thought patterns. Now, this is the narrative that your brain puts to this idea. Okay? Now, the narrative is a linear thing. It's the way that the words kind of formulate, the way your brain puts formulation to an idea. 
So in his world, it was everyone knows that rags to riches is the noble way, right? There are people out there starving and I'm not starving. Everyone's got some cool sickness and what's the, what's the new trendy illness to have? If I'm not sick, I must have missed something. So, so just know what that is in your life, what the voice is saying that's keeping you behind, right? I had a client earlier today who said, I, it, it, she, the words that she gets is, um, I suck at life. Pfft, ruined it again. See, I did that. And that's a, a mindset glitch sounds like something, sounds like a voice. What is that for you? In the third column, we need to hash out what the feeling response is. What, what is the vibrational experience, the, the emotion and the feeling, right? Remember, emotion and feeling are different. They come from different sources, but they, they both serve to, to, to describe or give flavor to that vibrational experience of life. Perhaps it's shame. Perhaps it's guilt. For my client this morning, it's guilt. I am guilty of ruining, I've ruined it for him, I'm ruining it for her, I'm going to ruin it for myself, I'm going to ruin it for everyone. I'm, I'm guilty of these things. Bonnie, what is the feeling that you get when you think of, um, uh, when someone asks you to step forward as a one-to-one -one private coach and you're wanting to say no, that's the trigger there. You're wanting to say no, but you don't say no because of a feeling, because of vibration. Hash that out and write that down. Is it spite? Is it judgment? The feeling is what we're after here. So, so these three columns represent one vibrational reality. They represent one psychonumosomatic um, totality, mindset. These are the coordinates, the mindset. Now we're going to move into the logic pivot, okay? Which means the fourth column you're gonna hash out the evidence for the old paradigm. This is a little bit like saying to your ego, I get it, you have a reason to feel this way. It's like if a friend came to you and said, um, oh, I'm, I'm so fat, I don't like my body structure, I'm really fat. You know that if you said, no you're not, that's not gonna change their mind. And that won't change their mind at all. In fact, that's going to trigger resistance to whatever it is that you say next. So what you're wanting to do is you want to almost have compassion for or uh, acknowledge the reason for a way of being. And that helps to soften your subconscious egoic resistance to what you're about to introduce. Do you understand that? Yes. So you're going to hash out the evidence for this is like this is looking into your life and saying well of course i feel that way because you know this happened and that happened and this is in my story and this is what everyone says about what success should look like and this is what my boss told me about you know what he sees for me and this is what my father keeps saying and this is what i see on the adverts and the marketing all the things that Joanna listed earlier today about where these errors come from, they're partly you know, our own collective manifestations. So look at those manifestations and acknowledge that when we create something in accordance to a particular way of believing, we will see the proof of what we believe, won't we? We will. So this column is about acknowledging that. It's about, it's about um, letting the lot be counted letting the lot be, be um, taken account of. Got it? Mm -hmm. Good. So then we pivot. Then we pivot. In the fifth column, we begin, we, now we have to use our logic. This is where we list the evidence against the old paradigm. Or we could maybe use more positive wording and say this is evidence for a new paradigm. Because the truth is that you're not just made of error. There is a truth blueprint in you as well. There is a divine blueprint in you. That even if there is a, there's a story here that says, I'm not worthy, there is a big part of you that knows I am worthy. If there's one piece of you that says, I haven't suffered enough, 
I can promise you there's a way bigger piece that says, I don't need to suffer. I am enough. Which means that you're also manifesting that. That's why life is a mixed bag. That's why we don't just create based on our thoughts. So in this column, list the proof that the old paradigm is not the ultimate reality for you. Here you're going to maybe list something like, well, I've, I've succeeded in many different areas before. In, in Muhammad's case, it was, I've actually been through my own challenges and suffering isn't a requirement. Or I've been able to heal and receive love even when I didn't hit rock bottom. Perhaps if we're dealing with exercise and wellness choices, perhaps if one of your core paradigms is that, um, that it works for others but not for me, right? There's no point me taking my supplements because it probably isn't going to work for me. Perhaps, perhaps the evidence for is going to be, well, actually, my doctor of kinesiology has tested that this is exactly what I need and that's proof enough. Or perhaps it's going to be a memory that when I took that Cataplex E2 last year, it really did make a difference on, on how I felt, right? So you're going to look for evidence in your life to say that that core paradigm, that core mindset glitch is not the ultimate reality for you. Okay? Good. Good. Now we're shifting, right? We're shifting. That's the pivot. We're shifting into the new paradigm now. So now that means that if we're going to allow or hold space in mind and space in vibration for a new reality to begin to form, that means that there's also going to be a vibrational response to that. Now, I'm not talking about the vibrational response coming from resistance, okay? Maybe there's some of it is going to be an unbelief. I can't take that job opportunity. I, I can't triple my income. I can't do that. I'm talking about underneath that, right? If we allow ourselves to lean in to this reality as being possible based on the fact that we do know that ultimately this is the field we belong to, the field of ultimate potentiality, the field of ultimate creative life force. <laughs> Who's this white creature jumped into the picture? Hello, beautiful thing. Lovely thing. White like an angel. Um, if we're going to lean into the knowing that I actually am a conscious co-creator and I am allowed to manifest a more positive, benevolent and uplifting reality for myself, I can have a job coaching online. It is okay for me to reduce my hours and increase my income. That is a possibility in the ultimate field of, of, of potentiality. Then what is the feeling that arises? Write that down. Explore that. Remember, it's not about listing here. We're not, we're not trying to get the facts down. We're trying to, to um, hold space vibrationally for a new thing to come to form. Perhaps it's recognition. Perhaps it's relief. Perhaps the feeling is peace. Maybe celebration. What is it to you, right? This is your, your awareness of a vibrational reality. And that allows access to a new universe of thought, a new um, archival system of cognitive process, yes? If your vibration has changed, then your thoughts can change, yes? So what are those thoughts? Begin to put words to them, begin to formulate them. In Muhammad's case, my story is noble, actually. The thing that I've been through is enough. I do deserve love, I do deserve excitement and passion and uplift. And I can heal and I can trust that I won't lose my place if I heal. What are these things for you, right? What, how would you put words to, how would you put cognitive linear language to the new feeling relating to your new vibrational reality? And that brings us to the pivot. 
Now, you already know what the pivot is. It's the opposite of that mindset glitch. If the mindset glitch you have is it works for everyone else and not for me, then the opposite of that is it works for me. It works for me. I can participate in this. If, 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 if Bonnie's core trauma code or core error code is, I'm stuck in this way of being, then the opposite is, I'm liberated to serve. I'm liberated to serve. I know how I serve. I'm liberated to serve in that way. In Muhammad's case, the new paradigm, the pivoted paradigm is, I am enough. from I haven't suffered enough to I am enough. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. This is a process of awareness. It's not, re like I said, it's not about listing facts. I have some clients who can fill journals upon journals upon journals with stuff for each of these columns. And I have clients who write only a few code words and that's enough. The point is the journey of awareness that you take because awareness is that secret source that heals all things. And you take your awareness on this journey through these realms. What you're doing is stitching those realms together. You're creating a neat little package. Yes? Good. Stop share, click, and change that, pop that there, and here we go. All right, now, for those of you who were present at the, the beach party, you'll remember that I taught you this energy technique called Negong. Can you spell that? Yes. N-E-I space G-O-N-G. I love that. Yes. This is one of the most beautiful energy techniques that I have ever known. It's easy and discreet, and it makes such an immediate impact. It was taught to me by Dr. Cynthia Clark about six or seven years ago, and boy, has it changed my life. Now, in, in Eastern teachings, you might be aware of mudras, right? Mudras are hand positions, that when you change the hand positions, what happens is that the way that the subtle energy moves around the meridian system in the body also shifts. Well, this particular mudra is called Gyan, and that's the master's mudra. It combines your crown chakra, which is your highest knowing of yourself, with your solar plexus chakra, which is your foremost knowing of yourself. So it's like saying, I am here now. It's like combining your highest awareness with who you are in this moment. That's what this mudra does. And what Gong does is it taps that mudra in. It's a dynamic mudra now. So it's almost like a choosing tool. It's like saying, I am that. So when you do this mudra, when, while you combine it with that new paradigm code, I am enough, after having stitched those different realms together using the logic tool, then you're addressing not just one thought, but the entire universe, the entire um, package here of your way of being. This is a way of being. This is a system of operating, of showing up in the world. This is your interface. This is how you're presenting into the world. So when you do the tapping, the Gong with that pivoted uh, paradigm code, that's the thing that you're addressing. Yes? So, congratulations, girls. You've, you've opened a conversation with your consciousness about the mindset glitches that cause wobbles in your experience, these mindset glitches that can have a chokehold 
on your ability to really lean into your new and reimagined way of being. So I want you to celebrate the process. Celebrate that change is a process and you don't have to walk the way unassisted. There's a lot going on in the mind. You know, we as a being, we are a complicated soup of thought and feeling and subconscious paradigm. And so it, when we're, we're never seeking to heal things layer by layer by layer by layer, we want to go to the original domino and topple that one and let process do the rest. So use your team, use us at Longevity Wellness Clinic. We're your team, we're your cheerleaders, your champions. We can run the tests on your body systems. We can scan your energy field. We can lovingly bring the microscopes of meta view of awareness into the spiritual realm and help you overcome those soul traumas. So to finish off, I want to, to, I want to bless your inner mindset word, work with these lovely words by the Celtic poet and mystic called John O'Donoghue. And these are the words he gives us. When you listen to these words, you can feel free to do the Nagong. And you can apply these words to your inner process, to the inner work that you're doing and the process of unfolding. And imagine that these words are washing over those mindset glitches and that package that you've created with the logic tool. Don't worry, I'm going to email you this template so that you can use it yourself in your own time. Listen to these words and let them wash over that whole package. Are you ready? Ready. Ready. May the light of your soul guide you. May the light of your soul guide Bless the work you do with secret love and warmth of your heart. May you see in what you do the beauty of your own soul. May the sacredness of your work bring healing, light, and renewal to those who work with you and those who see and receive your work. May your work never weary you. May it release within you the wellsprings of refreshment, inspiration, and excitement. May you be present in what you do. May you never become lost in bland absences. May the day never burden. May dawn find you awake and alert, approaching your new day with dreams possibilities, and promises. May evening find you gracious and fulfilled. May you go into the night blessed, sheltered, and protected. May your soul calm, console, and renew you. Thank you so much for joining tonight, ladies. We talked about clearing mindset glitches along the process of binding those glitches to the energy field and to the manifest world through the way we think. It is a lengthier process than we can cover in one hour. But like I said, you don't have to do this unassisted. I'm going to email each of you the template for the logic tool. And I encourage you to reach out to Lauren at the front desk at Longevity Wellness and set an appointment to see me so that we can do the deep inner work together and unravel truly what those strands of mindset glitches are in your consciousness and how they form the barriers, the guardrails in your life that pre prevent you from transcending into the next realm of who you really are. Oh. If you have any questions, girls, the floor is yours. So, Joanna. Yes. I assume also um, we 
can work with, let's say, or ask for if you're noticing certain patterns in your life, let's say, but have no idea what the thoughts are that might be creating that uh, pattern that's manifesting. Just noticing a certain pattern in it, it may or may not be a pattern, it just, but it's hard to, it's a question, let's put it that way. Why, why is this happening? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, it's just kind of a noticing. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there's an approach for sort of identifying what those, those thoughts might be. Yes. That underlying that, that create the glitch, in other words, to create the original pattern. Yes. That's right. And that's, that's one of the great reasons to work with a guide or with a Sherpa who understands the landscape, really, because what we're wanting to do there is to, to look at the manifest pattern, to understand the energetics that contribute to that manifest pattern. And that's what, that's what then shines a light on what's going on inside the subconscious mi um, mindscape you could say. There is an approach. Uh, the, the approach that I personally use is called sovereign, which is a framework for understanding these things. It's logical and sequential, but it's also soaked with grace. And that's what me that means that we don't need to look at every single layer of the onion, that we're directed really effectively into the core issue of why that pattern keeps recurring, keeps coming back. Like we said at the beginning, it, it, it could be intergenerational. It could be past life. It could be um, physical trauma that's held in the body. And what we want to do is unwrap that and really look at that landscape. That's a good question. Thank you. Does anyone else have any observations or ideas about what's going on um, in consciousness, in mindscape, in your mindset glitches? Yeah, I have a question um, just about the work, the approach to the work. Um, and, and I believe you <laughs> when you're saying that it's, it's not mental, um, but, but we're using words in this process, you know? So a lot of, a lot of concepts, a lot of um, constructs of the mind. So how does it how does it reach the quantum field or how does it reach the vibrational place yeah. for a true shift to happen beyond our thoughts? That's a brilliant question. That is a brilliant question. And um, what we need to do, we need to use thoughts. We need to use linear language because that's our communication method. And yet, embedded in the languaging that we use, particularly when we're using, when we're working together uh, in, a, in a private setting, there is, there is intention and meaning embedded in word, which allows us to transcend the structures, the, the, the conceptual structures of word. Remember, the magic of alchemy is the philosopher's stone, which is the word the structure itself, and the elixir of life, which is the essential vibration that goes with it. Yeah. So we'd be using, we'd be using energy work, we'd be using um, uh, uh, t talk, language and conversation, philosophy, but fundamentally it's intention and meaning. That's what reaches quantum, right? Quantum mm -hmm. is the, the, the pre, is the superposition state, pre-collapse. So, uh, so although we, we are only able to use manifest form in interrelation with one another in this kind of work, we can trust that intention, which is, which is an ethereal and esoteric and hard to define mystery is what intention is, what's it made of. But, but that's really fundamentally where, what energy work is about is a combination of, of, of intention and vibration directed in a specific way. So we use word and concept to create framework, which we then direct our energy and intention into. That's how we reach quantum. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. 
girls if there, there are no other questions then expect an email from me soon i'm gonna i'm gonna send you the the template and i'll also send you the recording from from this so you can go back and have a look at it if you want to um i'll include in the email a couple of opportunities for you to just directly reach out to lauren and set up an appointment with the discount that you can expect from as a thanks for being on this call with me and for giving me the time of day listening to my voice and my ramblings but mostly girls for for your for your courage and intention to be a part of renewal thank you so much for yeah. your heart i i really feel you elizabeth and um beautiful soul you're a beautiful soul yes Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate your time. Goodbye then. Have a wonderful weekend. Okay, thank you. See you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.